I'm so sorry this video is late. I went to start editing it and it was blurry. So for the second time, today is Top 10 Wednesday and per fan request months ago, but I warned her it would be about this time of year. I was hoping a little bit earlier, but I could talk about my top 10 books that encounter the fae folk, the fairies, and how they work, and their myths, and not necessarily just the fae myths, but our characters interacting with them, working with the fae, and how they function and learning about them because they ain't like the way they appear in Disney, let me tell you that. So we are going from the closest to the Disney-ish, childish, friendly, you go in and all you know is about, you know, Tinkerbell and things like that and slowly working our way to the books that many people, that's where they started on and it was a shock factor and they're like, oh my gosh, I never want to read about fairies ever again. And so that's where the spectrum goes. This is not my favorite to least favorite. I have quite a few favorites in this list anyway that all kind of tie at number one and are difficult to choose. So it's just easiest to get into to you probably should at least read three or four of the other series that I talked about before to touching the top three. Now I do have an honorable mention. This kind of fits around the middle of that age group and it is Chrono Crusade by Daisuke Moriyama. Chrono Crusade follows the story of Rosette and she is bound to a demon named Chrono. Now the reason I work with demons, in Japanese myth, they don't have fairies, but the yokai, the demons, they are just like and identical to the way that the fairies work in European myth. And so that's why this one and several others are on this list. Chrono is a demon and his horns, his antennae basically, have been removed, which means that he can't function very well. And so in order for him to function, he bonds with Rosette. And Rosette needs Chrono's help to save her brother from some other demons that Chrono is also working against. It's a comedy, it's really funny, there's only eight volumes, so it's not that long, especially for a manga series, but I enjoy it immensely. That's why it's getting an honorable mention. At number 10, however, sitting in that position is Artemis Fowl by Ian Colfer. The Artemis Fowl series, just like Chrono Crusade, has eight books in it, and it follows the story of Artemis, who is a boy genius in Ireland, and he knows if you want to get a lot of money, according to Irish myth, then you have to go and kidnap a leprechaun. And so Artemis does that. And so he kidnaps the leprechaun, Holly, who is right there. And then he learns that the fairies aren't the way they are in myth. They are two to three hundred years more technologically advanced than humans. And it's really interesting. It's very kid-friendly, very much number 10 on this list. And I just really enjoy it quite a lot. I love to see Holly and Artemis development and their relationship develop, not romantically. He's a child for most of the series, so... In the ninth spot is the Seven Water series by Juliette Morillier. The first book, Daughter of the Forest, follows the story of Sorsha. And Sorsha is the daughter of Lord Colum, who is bewitched and entranced by an evil sorceress who curses Sorsha's brothers. And so Sorsha is helped by the local fairies who inform her that she can break the curse and she has to break it. And then the fairies in this book are missing and there's an evil fae lord and it takes more the typical medieval style of fae of them being very, very dangerous and you do not want to cross them or have any encounter with them at all. But this is one of my favorite series ever. This is one of my most influential series to that I have ever read. Sorsha taught me a lot about bravery and courage and it taught me to be proud of my Irish heritage. A whole bunch of things. I just love this book. Number eight usually would make this list of when you think books with fairies. This is one of the first ones you go to, and that is The Spiderwick Chronicles by Tony Dieterlizzi and Holly Black. The Spiderwick Chronicles follows the story of Jared and his brother Simon and his sister Mallory Grace, and they have moved across the country because their parents just got a divorce. Simon is very angry about this, and then he discovers that weird things are happening in the house because Jared is a troublemaker 
filmmaker he usually gets blamed. Well, there's something else going on, and when he finds his great-grandfather's field guide to fairies, he learns that fairies are there and that some of them are pretty benevolent, some of them don't like humans at all, and some of them are incredibly dangerous and like to kill and maybe even eat humans. And they are all after this field guide because the field guide talks about all fae and all of their weaknesses, which is very dangerous because one particular troll is after ruling all the fae. And so he is after this guy and him and his siblings have to work together to keep their family from being killed. Number seven starts off not really on the fairy spectrum other than what the race of the main characters are. But I am talking about ElfQuest by Wendy and Richard Peeney. ElfQuest follows the story of Cutter, the blonde right here, and his tribe of elves, the Wolf Riders, who are at war with the caveman-like humans of his area. While it doesn't really match so much with typical fairy myth for the most part. There is a point much later in the series where there is a 10,000 year sleep. That's all I'm saying about it. And when they wake up, they have become the myths and legends of the fairies that exist in Europe. Leaving warm milk out to keep the fairies, asking the fey folk to bless your crop and blah blah blah, and then the fey folk obliging. That happens, and it's a really cool transition to see them move in from just elves into, no, elves of legend. And it's really interesting, and I love this series two pieces. It is very much diverse. His wife, Lita, is dark-skinned, and they talk a lot about racism and bridging that gap, and it, it's so good. It's so good. And the number six position, again, about the time of Chrono Crusade wouldn't match, is Tsubasa Reservoir Chronicle and Triple X Holic by Clamp. I am talking mostly about Triple X Holic, but you have to read these two series together because they are the same story. This character here and the main character, Watanuki, over here in Triple X Holic, they are very much linked. But focusing mostly on Triple X Holic, again, Japanese doesn't have Fey Folk. However, they definitely have something called the Yokai, the demons. And the Yokai that Yuko, the Witch of Dimensions, works with and Watanuki, who works for her encounter, are very much like the European counterparts in the Fey, spirits of the trees and spirits of the mountains. This is very similar also to Princess Mononoke by Studio Ghibli. They're gods, the god of the wolves and the god of the boars and the god of the forest itself, very much just like how the lord and ladies of the Fey folk in the Seely and Unseely courts are in European legends. I had to include it, especially because we do end up meeting a spirit that is just like Tinkerbell. Looks just like her. And then we have spirits that look like other fae folk that I've seen and read about in other stories. So definitely on the spectrum. However, one of the things that they encounter and why it's towards the middle, because the spirits that they encounter in here, now when they work with them, they can end up being quite dangerous. In fact, that's what you first deal with are nothing but very, very dangerous spirits that if Yoko doesn't follow certain rules and Watanuki doesn't follow certain rules, could get themselves killed. Basically, the story of Triple X Holic is Watanuki's this normal boy, and then he finds this shop where the Witch of Dimensions lives, and he ends up working for her. And it's pretty funny, and it's really kind of cool because it involves a lot of Japanese folklore and myths. And again, very much like the European European counterparts. Number five is a series I don't own and don't have it on me right now, but it's one of my favorite manga series ever. Again, follow the same lines as Triple X, Holic, and Chrono Crusade. We are talking about Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan. Nura, Rise of the Yokai Clan follows the story of Rikuo Nura, who is the grandson of Lord Pandemonium, king of all yokai for the entirety of Japan, Nura Rihion. And he is that heir, but he is only one-fourth yokai, and he has to learn to balance yokai and humans. Their yokai, especially of his clan, are very, very much like European myths. It's astonishing. We have some that are like the beginning of the Seven Water series, who are very benevolent to humans and like them and work with them and assist them with certain problems. Some of them, like once there's a shop entirely run by yokai that cater to actual humans because they love working with humans. And so they are very careful about the food that they use so they don't put too much of their power into the food because then people don't eat normal food and that's not 
healthy. And then there's also yokai that love to kill and eat humankind and love to torture and hurt them just like some the evil of the fae can be. And so Nura has to work because he has both of those types in his clan and he has to work on the balancing act because again he's part human and part yokai and so he wants to have the two worlds coexist together and not try to destroy one another. And all of this in secrecy. Number four may surprise you, but I am talking about The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings by J.R. Tolkien. And again, you may be thinking it's kind of like with ElfQuest that there are elves. However, especially in The Hobbit, the elves very much parallel European myth. Of course, J.R. Tolkien is English and was born and raised and died in England and is buried in England because that's his country. Much like the myths and legends, especially of the Irish Fae, there are the elves who are older than humanity and then humanity comes along and they work with them and help them and then eventually the elves, their power begins to fade and they start leaving for the undying lands to never return. That's very much an Irish myth. Some of the elves in The Hobbit, which don't really match the rest of Middle Earth Legend, Tolkien said he would like to rewrite some of the things in The Hobbit. It, later on in life, he said that. But anyway, they're a little bit sillier and they sing and they sit in trees, but them talking to the trees and being one with the world and one with animals like horses and things. Yeah, that's very much European fairy myth. Now the reason this is number four, one, it's my favorite series of all time, one of two, and two, it's actually kind of hard to get into. Some people say that they have a lot of difficulty. I remember I read this first in middle school, and while this was pr a pretty easy read and easy to understand, there were entire portion portions of The Lord of the Rings that I had trouble reading, I had trouble understanding and getting through, so this is very much an adult series, and it's very much a classic, so it's a little wordy, but I love of it anyway. Now we are getting into the heavy hitting. I don't recommend that if you've never read a book about fairies to pick these up because they may squeak you out. Very much so. Now this series in particular for number three is being rewritten. It's going to come out with a newer version that may be better because the author has said that there are problems with it so she's going to fix it. I'm talking about the Twilight Dress Board series by L.A. Knight. In particular I'm going to talk about Glass. Alyssa Card is a normal girl who has bounced around from school to school and now she's attending Pillar Preparatory Academy. As she's going into the school for her very first day she gets this weird text message about save the name and it's in verse and she's like what? She's not paying attention where she's walking, runs into a girl who turns and slaps her so hard she sees stars and then turns around like nothing happened. Alyssa did not let that go and punches her in the face. Turns out the school is a majority of non- humans. There are witch queens, two of them, the Red Queen Geneva on one side and the White Queen Lily on the other. Alyssa punched Lily in the face in the morning and by lunchtime is over she has punched Geneva in the face and so she's caught with both of these courts who hate each other are now focusing on her and she has to try to rescue this knave and is coming in to help the Fae who are the students of this school mostly. There are plenty of humans but mo and they're shaped shifters and things, but they're all different types of fairies. But my girl LA Knight really knows fairy myth and legends, and so she includes a slew of fairies that you don't see very often and that are named and described, and there are a bunch of fun characters. I love this series. It's one of my favorites. I LA Knight, of course, not just my best friend, but she's one of my favorite writers, and she's really, really good. And I love her to pieces, and I helped edit these, and I will link down below where you can buy these. Now the number two spot. I am talking about Wicked Lovely by Melissa Marr. Ashlyn is a normal girl except for one thing. She can see fairies. She has what's called the sight. The sight can refer to two things. Either you can see into the future, or that also means you can see fairies whether they want you to or not, which is very dangerous, which is very dangerous because the least thing that a fairy will do if they find out that you can see them is poke out your eye and blind you. The worst thing they can do is torture you to death. And Ashlyn is very much aware of this. Well, then a fairy king, a lord of a court, is suddenly looking for her and is after her and she doesn't know why. This follows traditional European myth. You know, I was talking about how fairy, some fairies are evil. <laughs> 
fairies generally are evil. They don't view humans as their equals. They view them kind of like cattle. Some are kind of cute and you'll name them and pet them and then kill them and eat them. That's pretty much the way that the fae folk work. That's pretty much how they work. And so Ashlyn is thrown into this world that she's always seen the edge of and she's always known how malevolent fairies are. I think there's a line in here where a character says, so the fae folk live forever and all they do is kill, murder, torture, and have sex with each other. And the fairy that they were talking to, it was either in this or in number one, said, basically, and that's pretty much how it works. In the number one spot this series, I'm not exactly sure. I want to own this volume that's in my hand. This is the most into the myth, into the dark side of the Fae I've ever read. And it is Holly Black's Modern Fairy Tales trilogy. So the first book is Tithe, this is the second book, Valiant, and then the third book is Ironside. So Tithe follows the story of, I think her name is Kaylee or Katie, I'm not quite sure, her name's on the screen. So Kaylee is this normal girl, except she's always been able to see a couple fairies that lived in her backyard. And then she's going home one night and finds an elven knight who is dying. And she decides to help him, and in payment for that debt, she wants his full name. And his first name is Roybin. And Roybin is a knight who is a pawn in a scheme of two sisters in the Seely and the Unseely court going at each other. Now, you may hear, like, Wicked Lovely talks about it. You don't see it in that series. And the other ones I've mentioned, they don't really talk about it. But in the modern fairy tales, it is very big. There are two types of fairy courts normally. Sometimes there's the summer and winter, like in Wicked Lovely, there's a light and dark. But then there's the Seely and the Unseely court. This is the difference between them. You may be thinking, oh, that's light and dark, right? That's, you probably heard that. An Unseely fae will trick a child into going into the middle of the forest with them and will play with them for a bit and then kill them and then laugh. Seely Fae will trick a child into following them into the middle of the forest, play with them for a while, kill them, and then cry about it. That's the difference. Basically, the Seely think they're above the Unseely. The Unseely are like, hey, we at least embrace the fact that we're pretty darn evil. And they're like, well, we only are evil some of the time. Not really. And that's, uh, anyway, so these two courts have been going at it. Roybin's been thrown into the middle. And now Kaylee, because of this tithe ceremony, is thrown into the mix. And then she finds out she ain't human. Valiant is a little more different. The main character is completely human and never finds that out. And she is kind of like a side story that you don't necessarily need to read to read Ironside, but it's a good idea because it does go tithe Valiant Ironside. But Valiant has sex and it also has drug use and it's a lot, lot darker than Tithe or Ironside is. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. That is all of the books that I love. There are fairy books. Uh, quite a few. I have others that are on my shelves even that I haven't gotten to. There are plenty of others such as Throne of Glass and a few others that I haven't read and don't plan on reading that you may know of and so you may want to look elsewhere into there but these are what I recommend to read. And again, starting with Artemis Fowl, Seven Waters series, or Spiderwick Chronicles are what I suggest you start with. I would not touch the modern fairy tales, Wicked Lovely, or even Glass and Obsidian until you've read at this kind of story so you get a better handle on the transition from Disney to fairies killing and eating people for fun because they find it hilarious. I hope this helped you. I'm sorry it's really late. Girl who asked for it months ago. I'm really sorry, but it's here now. Well, good luck with your reading and I'll see you in the next video. Bye! So for the second time, let's re- <sighs> For the second time, today I am talking is- I have quite- I just spit. I just spat. More grass. More grass. It's way up there. Number seven starts off not. Ugh. You go. Yeah, that's her name. They are. Ugh. Who is the grand? Ugh. Who is grand? Ugh. And that is the myths and ugh. some of the fey. Uh, some of the fey. And I am talking about the Twilight Chessboard Chronicles. Not Chronicles. And try and is coming in because the worst thing that a, the bleh, you, 
Ugh, sorry, my toes keep popping. Where the Fae Folk basically... Ugh. This is the second book of Valiant, which is the only one I can find, and it's not my favorite. She's actually always been able to see Fae. Oops. So she's... Ugh, let's just start that over. And one day she's going home, and then she finds a knight. Who, a fae, ugh. 